Hi everyone. I painted this tawny owl last March and with its amazing glassy eyes it rapidly became my most requested painting tutorial. I finally got to creating a full tutorial of it for my online school but in this tip video I wanted to show you how I tackle the eyes themselves to capture that fantastic reflection that brings the bird alive. Firstly I use a great quality photo and this one was courtesy of the wildlife photographer Mark Hancocks. I begin with a detailed contour drawing where I mark out the key shapes of reflection within the eyes. The key here is to stop thinking that you're drawing an eye and instead focus entirely on the different shapes of colour that you can see within the eyes. What made these eyes special is the way that you can see a skyline and a tree in the eyes. But don't get caught up with what it is you're seeing, just focus on getting the shapes correct and at the right angles. As always, I begin by painting the lightest tones within an area. This time the lightest areas of reflection within the eyes. I apply a watery grey mix fairly evenly over the eye to match to those lightest tones. I add some brown paint into the mix to change the colour slightly on the secondary curves of reflection at the sides of the eyes. Then I use a smaller brush to paint the pale purple lines that surround the eyes with watery paint. I want them in place first before I paint the very dark colour of the eyes because if I added them afterwards the watery purple mix may make the dark paint bleed and I want to keep a really smooth crisp line to the eyes. So once the eye is dry I go in with the very darkest dark of the eye. That's a super thick and buttery black colour. I paint in all areas that are this colour making sure that I leave the lighter areas of highlight. This includes using the tip of the brush to paint the little tree in each of the eyes and to get a really crisp edge to those highlights and to the very edge of the eye itself. Next I can work on the mid-tones and darken up parts of the reflections that should be darker. Tone or value is relative and now that I've darkened up the darkest tones and the mid-tones in the reflections I can see that the brown colours in the secondary reflections should also be darker so I darken them by adding a slightly thicker layer of the brown paint to them. With those darkened I can see that the lightest parts of the reflection are too light so I darken them a fraction with some very dilute paint. Because I'm using a tiny brush it doesn't deposit too much paint on the paper and the rest of the eye doesn't get affected. Once the highlights are darkened I can see that I need to go back to the midtones and darken them a little more with the mix that's still fairly pale and watery because it's the adding of a further layer that's doing the subtle darkening up here. I make sure that I pay close attention to the reference photo and only darken the areas that need it, leaving slightly lighter areas that are really what create the shape to the eye. I also darken the secondary reflections too. Finally I can now tell that I need to darken the darkest tones some more so I go back in and add another layer of the thickest black paint to the areas that need it. And once the dark eyes are in place the bird is already coming to life on the paper and I'm in a great position to work on the rest of the bird and the background. I hope you'll now have a go at painting some reflective owl eyes and if you'd like more detailed real-time instruction on painting the feathers and background too, the full step-by-step -step tutorial is now available as part of my online school. If you've enjoyed this tip video, please visit animationart.com where you can sign up for a free step-by-step -step tutorial, check out the equipment I recommend, view more tip videos, get inspired by my portfolio and lots more. Thanks for watching. 